All right, guys. Uh, it's Wade. So I wanted to, I got an email. I got email, emails from you guys uh, regarding the assignment. A little bit of just asking for a little bit more clarification. So I'm replying to that request. Um, here, I, what I wanted to do is I've written an example. Okay, I have a case study for you. Additionally, I've, I've extended this assignment until Monday, 228. Okay, I've given you a few more days as well. Okay, to give you time to wrap your head around this, to digest this example so that you see exactly what I want you to do. Okay, um, so to be clear <clears throat> with this <clears throat> example that we're about to go through, right? This one, so this template that's been posted, okay? This is the template, that, the same template that you will use for all of your case study assignments for this course, okay? This one happens to be specific to neuroconditions in primary care, okay? That's what this one is specific to. For example, when we get to, uh, you know, getting these done on concussion, clearly, because obviously you're now we're learning about the SCAT-5, your physical exam would obviously include your, your normal neurological exam, your cranial nerve exam, and the SCAT-5 as well, right? So you would actually, you know, take your patient through that uh, in a concussion-based case study, okay? Um, and I can clarify that more when the time comes. But ultimately, this is the template <clears throat> that you would use <laughs> for all of your assignments, okay? This one specifically uh, is catered to the neuro conditions in primary care. So let's walk through it. Here it is, okay? Um, okay, so this guy, this, this guy's name is Jerome, okay? The first thing I've done here, okay, is based on the condition that I've been assigned. I picked a condition known as Bell palsy, okay? Um, so what have I done here? Okay, in the very first section, what I did is I have a clinical history consistent with this with this clinical presentation for Bell's palsy. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so Jerome is a 21-year-old male that presents with left-sided facial paralysis that has been present for the past six hours. He states that he woke up this morning and noticed that the left side of his face was sagging when he was standing at the sink washing his face. He denies any cognitive difficulties and was able to get through class without any significant confusion. He notes that one of his professors looked worried when she saw him and told him he should get that checked out. He notes some slurring of his words or speech as well. He denies any extremity weakness or sensory changes. He endorses a family history of stroke in his maternal grandmother. He denies any known cardiac history in his mother or father. Jerome states that he is very worried about his symptoms. He denies any other recurrent illness or cystic or systemic symptoms. He has not taken any medication since the symptoms began. <clears throat> okay, here's the deal. All right. So I presented you guys with, with this history. Okay, obviously, because of what we know about neuro conditions, we should, in this case, be asking a focus history, history question about stroke, right? Because if you, because he's he's presenting, excuse me with facial paralysis. So knowing which history questions to ask based on the diagnosis, okay? Um, so there you go. Presented you with a history that's specific to this concern, okay? So the big question that we need to ask when writing this section is what would someone with this presentation look like clinically when they come to see you, okay? All right, next, next section, physical exam, okay? So let's walk through this. The first thing I did, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said, Jerome's alert and oriented with a GCS, Glasgow Coma Scale of 15, okay? Spontaneous eye opening, he's verbally intact and he's following my commands, okay? Pulse of 70 beats per minute, blood pressure at 117 over 78. Why did I do that, right? Because this is, because this is an acute presentation, okay? Stroke is on the differential until it's not, right? So here in this case, because of the focal fate, the, the focal deficit, I'm getting a BP, right? Um, so this BP is 117 over 78. Respirations are normal, are normal and non-labored. Here we go. Station and gait, normal. Transfers, independent without the use of hands. There is noted facial weakness with testing of C of uh, C7 uh, on, on exam. Cranial nerves two through six and eight through twelve are normal. Sensation is intact and symmetric throughout the face and neck. Sensation is intact C2 through T2 and L1 through S1. 
Okay, strength testing is symmetric. C1 through T1 and L1 through S1. Okay, those are my myotomes. Okay, deep tendon reflexes are two plus at the bicep, brachioradialis and triceps, two plus at the patella and Achilles. Hopkins is negative, negative Babinski's with toes down and going. Okay, what did we just read? So, first of all, he's alert and oriented GCS of 50, pulse of 70 beats per minute, blood pressure, normal, respirations, normal. Okay, station and gait normal. Okay. That also fits because here in the physical exam section, we can obviously see that his strength testing is symmetric. Okay. He's got normal strength. So if he's got normal motor strength, we would expect, right, normal, uh, you know, generally speaking, we would expect uh, normal gait patterns, normal station and gait as well. Okay. So uh, reflexes, stone cold normal, two plus biceps, brachioradialis and triceps, Two plus, stone cold normal, patella and Achilles. Hoffman's negative, negative Babinski's, okay? Normal neuro exam, other than the fact that he has a left-sided facial paralysis examination of nerve C7. So on the left side, the face is drooping. I can't do it, obviously, but it's drooping. Both he tried to smile. The right side would go up, but the left side would stay down, okay? So right-sided function, left-sided weakness. Okay, there we go. Okay, radiographic studies. We immediately referred Jerome to the ED for imaging. Okay, so he had a, he had a, diff a diffusion-weighted MRI to rule out tra uh, transient ischemic attack and stroke. That was normal, no evidence of ischemia. Okay, so my assessment, Bell's palsy. Okay, what did I give you guys here, by the way? What's this little number in this code next to it? Okay, G51.0. Okay, that is the ICD-10 code for Bell's palsy. Where do you find that? Well, let me show you. Okay. <clears throat> One second here, folks. All right. Let me share a website with you real fast. Here we go. Here's my website. Okay. You should probably see in front of you ICD10data.com. Okay, this is where you'll find your diagnosis codes for your assessment. So I had Bell's palsy. Let's type it in, Bell's palsy. Okay, so here it is. Okay, there's my diagnosis code, Bell's palsy, G51, okay, point zero. If I had, a, if I had, let's say for example, I had Parkinson's. All right, Parkinson's disease. Okay, diagnosis code here, G20. All right, and it gives you modifiers down here, obviously, as well. Um, so that's that, that's that code, and, that, and that's what that's for. That's what that is for. You list, just list that next to your assessment. You'll be all set. That that easy. All right, uh, let me unshare this, and let me share. I'll get the document back up. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. Now here's here's where here's where the basically where the rubber meets the road. This is going to require a little bit more work. So the clinical background section. You have just given me your you know your assessment. You've essentially walked me through your circle. Now here's your job. You're gonna you're gonna you have a clinical background section. You've noted that you've noticed here that I've wrote I've written 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 all of this in italics. Okay. To differentiate that this is not a part of my exam note. Okay, so what did I do here? I gave you a clinical background, a definition of Bell's palsy. What is it? Okay, so Bell's palsy defined. All right, what are some of the symptoms and the pathophysiology? Okay, so I gave you essentially the pathophysiology. So uh, Bell's palsy is a neurological syndrome affecting the facial nerves. Symptoms are nearly always unilateral, which is usually a symptom of underlying Kirby simplex one infection that can have a neuro that can have neurological manifestations. Patients usually present with mild to significant facial nerve dysfunction that can range from mild facial droop to complete to complete hemifacial so half of the face hemifacial paralysis. <clears throat> Speech is affected variably in those with Bell's palsy, concomitant with the level of facial nerve involvement. In patients who display facial droop, it is medically appropriate to rule out acute ischemic stroke or transient ischemic attack, as is often um, 
as this is often a clinical feature of ischemic stroke uh, and associated cerebral, uh, cerebral ischemia and infarct. Treatment for Bell's palsy is very straightforward, including oral steroids and watchful waiting. Patients with persistent symptoms may require prolonged use of steroids for up to 30 days, which is usually relatively, uh, a ben relatively benign, all by its scary condition for patients experiencing this type of neurological involvement. With the appropriate diagnostic work and treatment, this can be treated expediently and restore peace of mind for patients. Clinical background section. So, okay, develop your history based on what you know, and you're going to have to, you know, pull up an article or two. You're going to have to learn a little bit about these conditions. Okay, and what I've done for you here is I've made I've made up a reference in AMA format. Okay, last name, first name, title, Bell's palsy, the journal of HES three eleven. Okay, the year, journal volume. Uh, and basically, well, actually, the volume number and the issue number, rather, in, print, in the parentheses, colon, page number, okay? There you go. That's the assignment, okay? Um, if there are any other questions, please let me know, guys. The one thing that I, that I always want you to do, and if I have not done a good job of communicating this, I am sorry, but please make sure that if you're confused about an assignment or something doesn't make sense or you don't have enough clarity, all you have to do is ask me, okay? Please ask me. I'm not gonna be offended. I know that I have a lot going on right now, but I've accepted that as my life this semester. It is what it is. That's the way it's gonna be, right? And But but please don't ever be afraid to say, Wade, I need you to explain this, okay? This is something's not clear. You gotta explain this. If you, if you, talk, if you ask me that and you, and you ask for that, I'll do it, okay? So I hope this is helpful, all right? Um, and if there are any other questions, guys, just let me know. Okay, thanks.